Just put them upside down. <laughs> <laughs> From the top of Risk Canyon in Fort Collins, Colorado, welcome to the GCN Show. From the cobbled St. Gotthard Pass in Switzerland, welcome, welcome to, to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show from France. This week, we have got an incredible competition for you. One of you is going to win a brand new Orbea Orca Aero Mayo. Plus, we wrap up all of the drama and excitement from the Tour de France so far. Plus, we have a new bike, helmet, shoes, and home trainer in Tech of the Week. We've got our usual hacks and bodges. Plus, we check in with Mark Bowman on his round the world record attempt. Cheers to that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Tante. Is that French? Mm -hmm. Today, what I can do, I can just accept the decision of the jury. But for sure, I am not agree with them because I, I think I didn't do something wrong in the in the sprint. What is very bad, that uh, Mark, yeah, fell down. I, yeah, wish to Mark uh, recovery well and. Uh, and that's it. So much has happened in the opening week of the Tour de France that quite frankly, it's difficult to know where to start. But we'll have a go. First off, Peter Sagan was disqualified from stage four of the Tour by the race jury for putting his colleagues in danger after, during the sprint, he came into contact with Mark Cavendish. Yeah, and despite a protest to the jury by his team and then a subsequent appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, plus thousands of fans online protesting his disqualification, he did indeed have to head home, as did Mark Cavendish, in fact, with a fractured shoulder blade. Now, Sagan did apologise to Cavendish, firstly face-to-face -face straight after the stage, then on the phone that evening, and then the following day on social media as well. But it's basically us as viewers who are worse off in this situation, because two of the biggest name riders in the world were forced to head home prematurely. And we have to hold our hands up here at GCN, take a little bit of responsibility, because all four of us, before the race, predicted that Peter Sagan would win the green jersey. Peter Sagan. Peter Sagan. Peter Sagan. Peter Sagan will definitely win the green jersey. Definitely. I agree with you on that. Definitely. I am sorry about that prediction now, I must say. Uh, anyway, it does make you wonder what Sagan is now going to do with himself for the rest of this summer. Mm. He might take a well-earned holiday or he might do the traditional build-up to the World Championships, i.e. the Eneco Tour, followed by the Vuelta. However, current Olympic mountain bike champion Nino Schurter has invited him over to the dark side, i.e. off-road. Whoa. Well, it does highlight the fact I think we left something quite critical out of our top five sprinting mistakes video, as uh, suggested here by Jeff Harris. Ah oh yes, number six, don't yeah. stick your elbows out or you might be heading home prematurely. Uh, anyway, back to the racing. How close was stage seven? Oh, it was incredible. I mean, you might have thought that with two critical riders absent in the sprints, that Marcel Kittel would have things all his own way, but not so. Edvard Bosenhagen of Team Dimension Data could not have pushed the German any closer. Somehow the jury did manage to separate the two at the line, giving Kittel the victory by 0 0.00003 seconds, apparently. It doesn't get much closer than that, Dan. But some other standout performances from the other stages. Fabio Aru took the first mountaintop finish on the Planche de Belfi with a stinging attack. And then, of course, what a ride by tour debutant Lilian Carmejan on stage eight. He won solo to the Station de Russe, but where do you even start? We're stage nine. Indeed. There was barely a moment to rest, was there? Uh, not just for the riders, but even for us watching on the sofa on our television screens. Uh, early on, there were quite a few abandons, most notably that abandon of Geraint Thomas, who crashed and broke his collarbone. So Team Sky, one man down. And then on the final ascent up the Mont du Chat, it appeared as though Fabio Aru attacked just moments after Chris Rune raised his arm to signal a mechanical problem. Yeah, to me, it did seem pretty blatant. And then after that, a debate 
ensued on the polemics, of course, of the unwritten rules. But that was soon quickly forgotten shortly afterwards on the descent, the treacherous descent of the Mont de Chat, where Richie Port had a horrible crash in the process. He took down Dan Martin as well. Thankfully, Dan Martin managed to remount and finish the stage in a pretty high place, but the same couldn't be said for Richie Port, who was forced to abandon the race in an ambulance. Not very really good at all. No, we are in fact just recording this soon after that stage finished, so we don't know the true extent of his injuries. But what we've read so far, it doesn't seem like it's quite as bad as Thankfully. we first feared, because that was really a horrific crash. So we'd like to wish you all the best, Richie, and we hope you're back racing very soon indeed. Uh, meanwhile, at the front of the race, we had a sprint from a group of climbers, which is always it's entertaining, great. but especially so when one of the climbers only has the use of two gears, one of those being 53 by 11. And that is exactly what Rigoberto Uran of Cannondale Drapat used to sprint to victory, a very small margin over Warren Barguil. And that pretty much is the definition of a wattage bazooka. So that goes to you this week, Rigoberto Uran. In fact, Tom Scoyne's his teammate from Cannondale Drapat actually got in touch on Twitter nominating Rigo but we'd already decided, haven't we? Yeah, we had indeed. Uh, now, let's spare a thought also for some of the non-climbers in the race, because for them, it's very difficult to get through stages like uh, that we had at the weekend, uh, especially someone like Matt Heyman, who won oh. Peru Bay a couple of years ago. He's a very big lad, but waiting for him as a presence at the finish on the Champs-Élysées, if he gets there in Paris, is a single Smarty, which his son has saved for him. How cute is that? That would get his the finish, wouldn't it? It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Hot on the heels of last week's rap masterclass from a certain Andre Greipel comes another song in the world of cycling. Uh, oh. This one is called Quebeca Kuba Kuba and it was written and recorded uh, by the South African musicians Mark Chain and Monda Mutwana. Uh, it is available to download on iTunes and Google Play and a portion of the proceeds will go directly to the Quebeca charity. Uh, here's a clip of it now. Belgian newspaper Het Nieuwsblad has reported that the 2018 edition of the Giro d'Italia is going to start in Jerusalem, Israel. And if that is true, it'll be the first time that a Grand Tour has started outside Europe ever. Yeah. Now I can imagine it's going to be potentially quite a headache in relation to logistics. I can just imagine a lot of the riders milling about without any team buses like we see in the tours in the uh, UAE, for example. Yeah, yeah, that would be quite something, wouldn't it? Hark back yeah. to the good old days where the best riders in the world at the Tour de France were caught uh, just kind of propping themselves up yeah. on team car bonnets. Very easy access to us as journalists, though. Wonder That'd what be great. think, yeah. Anyway, some bad news for cyclists living in Oregon because they have become the first US state to impose a tax on bikes. Uh, so from this point onwards, if you purchase a bike there that is of $200 value or more, you will have to pay a flat rate tax of $15 on top of that price, which is quite ironic really, given that Oregon is quite a bike friendly state by all accounts. Well, I think the only good thing about that tax is that some of the money that's raised from the tax is going to go towards improving cycling commuter routes and also cycling projects. Now, a bit of an update on Mark Bowman. As many of you will know, he's attempting to break the world record for riding around the world. Now, our very own Sir Richardson joined Mark on his first leg, yeah. rode 380 kilometers, no less. Unbelievable, really, yeah. isn't it? But thankfully, and interestingly, Mark Bowman is going to give us a weekly update, the first of which you can watch right now. Cool. What a long week it's been, uh, from starting off in Paris, uh, over what a week and a half ago, getting all the vehicles, all the logistics, all the uh, communications, all the connectivity, mapping. Uh, really, really impressed. The team has worked incredibly well. I think most people could put their hand on their heart, and it, it's been difficult. It has been really difficult. Um, we expected that, uh, but ultimately, you know, and, and actually, more essentially, getting the team together and, and, and gelling and bonding, ready for um, this, this, this real great big feat ahead of us. Fundamentally, the last week's been really successful with response to, you know, Mark has, he's exceeded his, his goal target every day. We weren't actually planning on him doing that this week. The aim for me, actually, I was thinking I'd prepped him to do less volume on day three, day six originally, just because I was thinking to give him some extra rest and sleep. It's ended up being that 
he's he's been able to sort of control like his effort that he's put in because we've had a he's had a really lovely tailwind the weather's been good conditions have been great he's been able to finish early on a couple of evenings um, so he's got the extra extra sleep in um, and so things have conditions wise have just worked out really well this week so he's been massively on target if not slightly ahead of it which is great good for mentally for him he's really relaxed feeling quite calm about it I was looking Amazing. at his Strava this morning. Feast your eyes on the kilometres now that he's racked up on a daily basis. That is just on another level. His, his mental strength must be just out of this world. Well, just thinking about it makes my legs fill with lactic acids, to be honest with you. But anyway, sticking with stats, stage eight of the Tour de France was run off at an absolutely blistering pace from the very outset. And one of the riders who was in the thick of the action from the gun was the new national German road champion, Marcus Burkhardt, of Bora Hansgrohe. Check out this tweet and those stats. 360 watts for three and a half hours. That's only a few watts less than Alex Dowser did for the hour record. That is just ridiculous. We can only manage that for five minutes at the start of the marathon, couldn't we? I will explode. I will explode. Just got to knock it off. And well, being at the Tour de France is on as we speak. Uh, as you can imagine, the rumour mill is now in full swing. There's a few rumours coming out of the Quick Step Floors team. The first being that Marcel Kittel is close to signing on the dotted line for an extension to his contract with the team. He's, of course, won three stages of the race already this year. Whilst Amstel Gold and Tour of Flanders winner Philippe Gilbert has apparently already signed on the dotted line to extend his contract by two years, which is quite remarkable given that they haven't actually confirmed that they've got a sponsor yet for next year. Yeah, Pat Lefebvre clearly really confident about yeah. things, which is, which is good. Now, another bit of, well, pretty good news coming out of the Tour de France. Jon Izagili and Alejandro Valverde, who both had those awful crashes, breaking bones in both their bodies. They've had, both had successful surgery. They've now returned home to continue with their recuperation. And I think from us here at GCN, we just wish them all the very best in their recovery. We have got an incredibly cool competition for you all this week on the GCN Show. You have the opportunity to win a brand new Orbea Orca Aero Mayo bike, which if you watched last week's GCN Show, you will know has only just been released to the public. Uh, Mayo is Orbea's online design customization tool, which allows you to tweak the color scheme and basically uh, put the finishing touches to your bike. It's recently been updated, so it's very slick and very easy to use. And in fact, I managed to even use it myself this morning. This is my design. I went for a slightly understated but very sophisticated look. I think you'll agree. What do you think of that? It's not bad, Dan. I mean, when I eventually do mine, which you've inspired me to do, in fact, I think I'm just going to go a little bit more garish, a bit more outlandish. To I, be thought, I thought you, you do like to be seen, don't you? A, a little bit sometimes, from time to time. But I bet you're wondering how you can enter this competition. Well, there is a link in the description below the video. Click on that and answer a very simple question. And if you win, you get to win the bike that you've designed over on the Orbea website. How cool is that? That is very cool indeed. A bit like lastly designing his own Trek that he never stops banging on about. Yeah. It's your own opportunity to have equal bragging rights, I think you might agree. Uh, before we finish the competitions this week though, we also want to draw your attention to another competition being run by our clothing partners at ASOS. Now they make the GCN kit, but they also make Team BMC's kits. So they've joined forces with that squad to offer you the chance to win a VIP experience for the last day of the Tour de France this year. So you'll be joining the team throughout the day and you'll even get to join them for their post-race celebratory party, which is quite a unique opportunity. Yeah, and there are also second and third place prizes available as well. So head over to their website at Assos of Switzerland, shall I say, a link to which you can also find in the description below this video. Uh, there you can find two questions that you will have to answer to put yourself in with a chance of winning that competition. Yeah, all the very best. Cracking prizes. The 10-day Giro Rosa concluded on Sunday, but nobody was able to wrestle the leader's jersey away from Anna van der Breggen. She'd taken that all the way back on stage two, but from that point onwards, she gradually extended her lead over the remaining stage. And a true show of dominance, not just from her, but also from her team, Bulls Dormans. Yeah, Marta Bastianelli nabbed the only stage wins for the Italians in a bunch sprint on the penultimate stage, whilst the last stage was won by Megan Garnier, capping out a fantastic race for the Bulls Dolman squad. Meanwhile, Elisa Longo-Borghini was second overall and the podium was rounded out by Anna-Monique van Bluten. 
The celebrations though at the end of the race were somewhat overshadowed by the fact that Claudia Cretti had suffered a horrendous crash on stage seven. Uh, she was hospitalized and she has been in a coma ever since that crash. Now support, as you can imagine, came flooding in from all quarters of the cycling world, as you can see from the tweet flashing up on your screen right now. Uh, but we at GCM would like to add our voice of support to Claudia too. Uh, we are all thinking of you, Claudia, and we very much hope that you pull through soon. It's caption competition time now, uh, omitted from last week's show. Yeah. So we better announce the winner from two weeks ago, where the photo was this one of Peter Sagan. Uh, the winner is Christopher Jenkins, who put caption, when the UCI takes capping rules to ridiculous levels. Uh, get in touch with us on Facebook, Christopher, with your address, and we'll just get a GCN Camelback water bottle out to you as soon as possible. Hmm, and this week we've got this photo of Chris Froome warming down after a stage of the Tour de France in his yellow jersey. Dan's had a long, hard think about this, so Dan, set the bar as high as you can. You ready? Yep. Wahoo! You can beat that. Uh, yeah, leave your captions in the comment section down below. We shall pick a winner next week. It's time for Hack forward slash bodge of the week. The first one came in on Instagram from Tally Nerdy. I uh, saw this duct tape lug seal frame outside my apartment today. I hope that isn't repairing a crack, Dan. Uh, it's a huge, huge bodge, and if you do happen to find the person that is riding that bike, tell them to stop riding it. It's yeah, my suggestion. Immediate. Well, next up, again on Instagram, is this from Mark J. Carruthers. It's a bike stand of sorts. It's basically one of those things that you sort of your babies jump up and down yeah, in. A jolly jumper. Yeah, a jolly jumper. Your jolly jumper works down indexing with GCN. Dad hack. It really is yeah, a dad hack. Yeah, it's got a sign in the background on the TV. I hope you yeah. get your gears indexed properly with size advice. Uh, bodge or hack, do you reckon, for that? A bodge. Yeah, I'd say bodge. Uh, this one is definitely a bodge. Once again on Instagram from cultclassic.cc, uh, they've spotted these foam grippers for extra comfort. They could have done a better job with that, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it looks like they've done it in about five seconds flat. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of care gone into them, but uh, a nice effort, but badly executed, to be perfectly honest with you. Finally, we have this from Apex Athletic. Um, seen on a local for sale page. Um, I really Why? wonder if it ever sold. I mean, what the heck is going it on? It reminds me of one of those motorbikes that people ride around on where they've got their arms in the air like this. It looks incredibly awkward. How would you do a bunny hop with your hands up here like that? Yeah. Where would you get the lift from? Well, wheeling could be maybe easier on yeah. that bike, I'm not sure. You always say finally when it's not finally. This is the final one. I meant one. penultimately. Uh, yeah, this I think is going to be deemed our only hack of the day. Mm. Uh, this is from Martin Kimberley over on Twitter. Uh, don't throw standard wire bottle cages away. Keep your lid and sunnies together with this handy GCN hack. And it's that looks neat. remarkably neat. So I always do that at my house. So each bottle cage has got dual use, isn't it? So yeah. hanging the helmet, and putting your spectacles on, or your cycling based spectacles on as well. Yeah, very good indeed. We are impressed with that one. Uh, and if you'd like to send us your hacks or bodies, you can do so on social media using the hashtag GCNHack. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, how to make your bike rides better. Isn't it about time that you went Euro? We certainly think so. So change the units on your head unit from miles to metric, and you'll be immediately going further and faster on your right. Wow! You won't really, of course. You'll be going exactly the same speed, but it is nice to see bigger numbers and you'll feel way more pro. I feel more pro already, Dan. On Thursday, get this, how to go uphill faster without getting any fitter. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to watch that one. That was my face. On Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Uh, Saturday's pro bike is Alberto Contador's brand new Trek in Mondo. We've got a special unboxing for you on Sunday, which is, of course, your chance to win some more cool goodies as well. And then on Monday, we're back in the maintenance set for Mechanical Monday. And on Tuesday, it's episode 236, Dan, of, of the GCN show. GCN show. Yeah, another one. I think I'm in it again. Are you? Yeah, might be. I don't know if you are. Oh. It's me inside, isn't it? Back at the studio. Are you back home? Uh, on Monday, I'm back oh, right. in the office. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, maybe you're. <laughs> From the German Danish border, welcome to the GCN show. Wait for me, guys! Wait for me. We shall finish the show as ever with. Extreme, Extreme corner. corner, which this time comes from the Dolomites. Not Matt and I doing the Maratona, nope. but instead Sai competing in a mountain bike race with the GMBN lad, 
Neil Donoghue. He's done some riding these days, isn't he? But not on a mountain bike. Have a look at this. <sighs> that. He looks good side, didn't he? He did look good. I mean, we haven't got any official results in, but word on the street is that he trounced GMBN. Yeah. Trounced. Really? Yeah. It's quite an extreme word. Well, it is extreme corner at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. Now, you might have noticed that we are currently sporting some July themed t shirts. We are. Uh, they are Very available jolly. to purchase over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, a uh, link to which you'll be able to find on the screen right now. Also on the screen is a globe. Clicking on that will allow you to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see me and Dan in action, in the Maratona does dollar mitties that we did a couple of weeks back, how about clicking just down here? Meanwhile, as we mentioned, Cy did accompany Mark Bowman on the first stint of his around-the-world record attempt in 80 days. You can watch Cy suffering by clicking just down here.